interview Andy Sloan, day one. At Rose Hill School in Nottingham, they are challenging the belief that pupils on the autistic spectrum are not able to use their imagination successfully. The Creative Partnership Project encourages pupils to experience a wide range of media to produce innovative artwork, and teaching assistants take an active role in the planning, delivery and evaluation of creative activities. Kaylee, a former pupil, reveals how lessons in digital photography enabled her to realise her dream. You wanted to recognise me three years ago. I didn't used to talk and I used to like get very angry. Hey Wendy, lights, camera, action. Autism is a lifelong biologically based developmental disorder and that will affect people in three ways. Uh, they will have difficulties with communication. Uh, that is both verbal and non-verbal communication. They'll have great difficulties understanding any kind of language. They'll have great difficulties with social situations. They'll have difficulties in understanding how people behave and react. Uh, thereby they have great difficulties in establishing and maintaining relationships. It used to be said that people with autism lack imagination in what people term flexibility of thought. I think in many cases it's the neurotypicals, that's us who have the difficulty in understanding our children's imagination. But I think much of the work we're doing at Rose Hill at the moment shows that that is not actually the case. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Morning, everybody. Morning, Andy. Rose Hill School is a school for children with autistic spectrum disorders. Um, we go from four and a half up to 19, and every child in our school has an autistic spectrum disorder. There are only three girls and that is statistically the sort of norm, a very high percentage of people with autism are males. We now have a morning exercise session. It's akin to the brain gym. It puts endorphins back in the system. They're feeling good about themselves and they actually just enjoy the physical exercise. Just that coordinating the brain together to get them to do simple step ups or simple jumping forward and backward is not easy for our children. We tend to take it as granted that it's easy to jump. It is not for our children. They need to be taught to do that and to get the brain acting and working in that kind of way. Running was fantastic. And all around my life, I just run around and then just drag again. Some children in that group couldn't actually come into the hall two years ago. So for them to actually enter into the hall and be there taking part is really quite an amazing achievement for them. And all the sort of spatial awareness it takes to actually not bump into one another. One lad had a ear protectors on that was there to cut out certain sounds. And although he's sensitive to certain sounds, he is able to cope with that running. If it becomes too much, then obviously he'll leave the situation. Danny, the tall lad I was running with, just loves running around that hall in the morning. So it's really good for them. Well done. <laughs> whole sensory area is, is greatly impaired. They have big difficulties in processing sensory information. Let's Some go. children will enjoy certain noises. Other children will find noises very, very difficult to cope with. Some children will, will find touch very difficult to deal with. But other ones will crave hugging or to be touched. So there are big extremes in that sensory perception, that sensory processing area. The world is a very complex place for them uh, and therefore uh, they get very anxious and nervous about a variety of things. In some ways you can say autism is an anxiety based disorder. We have to provide an environment that is very predictable and safe and calm so that our children can actually cope with those anxieties. Andy's morning brain gym offers a dependable routine which enables Rose Hill pupils to take on the creative challenges of the day and exercise their imagination. In many cases, our children have very vivid imaginations, but that, I think, is the same of all artists. Salvador Dali and his clocks and Monet and his lilies, it's a very good way for their pupils to communicate their inner feelings with staff, if you like, and others. There's proof that people with autism do have imagination. It might be slightly stilted, um, and it might be very, very obsessionally based, but it is real imagination. 
Yeah. Well, when we do see imagination displayed within the classroom, we're really excited about it. We really celebrate imagination when we do see it. Just encourage all of the children to join in and make it a real fun, positive session. And what do we listen to? The music. Yeah, the music. In playtime, it's toast. <gasps> Tell me about playtime. Toast. Toast. Where's the toast? On the frame. Mmm. The playground frame looks like toast, doesn't it? Yeah, because I called it, didn't I? You did. Yeah, you did. Looks like that. Mm. <gasps> what do we do on Wednesday afternoons? Outdoor sports. We do. Yeah. Outdoors, yeah. And where did we go last week? To archers. We did! And what did we do? We climbed and we swim. We did. Show me how we swung. You show me. Swing? Yeah, stand up and show me. Show me how we climbed. Up, 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 and then we went. Go! Yes. Terry's a very interesting pupil. He's got classic autism. He's, you know, he's very autistic. But he also does have an excellent imagination. Um, a lot of it is repetitive and a lot of it is based around his obsessions and his interests. Outside play, call it toast. We do. Why do you call it toast? <laughs> because it's like this lot. Mm. What does it make you think of? Think of holding it. Do you? Yeah, and then, And then, do you pretend to give me some toast? <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. I'll show you lot, give some toast. OK. Hang on a minute. Where's my peanut butter? Here it is, Rob. Oh, so Thank you. How much was that? Will that be? Might be six p. Six p. There you go. Thank you. Okay, let's see my toast. No. Oh, yeah. Toast. Oh, yeah. Toast. Oh, yeah. Toast. Oh, yeah. Oh, delicious. Would you like some? Yeah, but we should, 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 should I pretend I'm you going on the climbing frame? Oh, but should yeah. I pretend to be a climbing frame? Yeah, but... pretend to go on the climbing Ready? frame. Go on then. Yeah. Rose Hill School has very much a, a team approach as regards organising classrooms. There will be one, one teacher and three or four teaching assistants. Ofsted picked up on the fact that a team approach is very central to the way that we work with our pupils. Many of our TAs have an interest in, in, in music and drama and art and we have used that interest and, and built that up and many of our TAs uh, have a leading role to play in the development of the arts within the school. They actually take on board much of the planning organisation along with the teacher, but have a leading light to play within, within the school as regards the arts. Ball to Debbie. I've been mentoring Debbie, so hopefully Debbie will be able to go on to do this with other children. That's the way the school's trying to do it. We're all taking on a, a person to mentor and then hopefully they can pass their skills on. And then most of the staff will be trained and be able to do this with the children. We have to have two staff with Daniel because he can be aggressive. He finds contact very difficult. He finds new situations very difficult. He's quite an angry young man. And what we're trying to do is get him to communicate with us. Can we clap hands? He quite likes songs, so we're trying to get the right tune that kind of grabbed his attention. And if we got it, we kind of used it like we did the stamp in the feet. And if you notice, he kept touching our feet to do it again. So we took that as a cue to do it again. And we were trying to actually get him to move about the room as well. And not always just go over to him, try and get him to come over to us. Daniel, put your arms up, arms up, arms up. Daniel, put your arms up, arms up, arms up. <laughs> the first session he came down and he wouldn't come off the ball. Didn't want anything to do with me or Debbie. Angry every time he came in, every time he went out. Past couple of sessions, he's come in quite angry again, but he has access more, I mean, you know, you saw him laughing, you saw him chuckling. So he was accessing small bits of it. 
which is a massive thing for him. It's creative thinking. Shoes on, shoes on, time to put your First I was a little bit sceptical. Then I realised what it does for the children and how much we get from the children. One of the things that we've got left to do is take photographs of some flowers, close-up photographs of the flowers too. What do we need to use to take close-up? What picture? Macro. Macro. The ninth flower. It's a flower symbol on those sorts of cameras, isn't it? We've actually had um, five pupils doing a Open College Network accredited course in digital imaging at entry level. And we have just finished off some of our folders doing that. And it's been really exciting. They've done some lovely, lovely work. We've done a lot of work on close up, looking at macro images, exploring our environment with the camera. It's very challenging working with children on the autistic spectrum. We've come to realise that working in a sensory way with our children and trying to help them to realise their own self-worth and to be able to get them to communicate through a sensory, a creative way is a very positive way to work. And because that is my interest too, I think that's what's kept me here and to try and um, work on that with the students and, and the other staff, because we do training for the staff as well. Uh, try not to eat it, Luke, it's not very nice. With me being the TA in our class, we're given certain subjects to be in charge of and that's the one thing that I'm really keen on, on sensory and touch and, and building things, and the kids love it, so it, it's just a really good thing to do. Creative Partnerships was set up in 2002 as a project to promote creativity and creative learning in schools and to leave a legacy. One of my roles in this school, in Rose Hill, is to give them time and insist on time for them as members of staff to reflect upon what's happening and where, where we go forward. He's looking at a maths and art course, how we can incorporate art into maths. Then staff can prepare the students. Yeah. They can do preparatory work before the eye comes in. Yeah. As always, you probably want to challenge and push a little bit with, with the staff, don't you? Michelle, this time the whole school will be sharing ideas and sharing possibilities. Wow. We're for lady. Black and mummy. It's the mummy return. Having an artist in residence has been key because she can then be very strategic, she can work extremely closely with the staff members, she can support them. Danny, listen to Betty. Damn it. Danny, finished. looking, is this finished? Or do you want to put some more on? How many more pieces? Two? Nett is my coordinator with the Creative Partnership. I will discuss with her and with the deputy head in what direction the creative work's going and she will also be involved in the evaluation process. We could possibly interpret seeing, not just physical seeing, but also feelings about things as a way of seeing yeah. others or seeing situations. The stimulus and, yeah. and, the, and things we've been thinking about, and they will then take it away and own it for themselves about how they'd use it. And also, what's great, we'll be all be able to share these ideas because and this time the whole school will be involved in the same activity. And we have challenged the child of impairments regarding imagination. Right from the onset we were looking at um, exploring imagination, although at that time I don't think we were conscious that we were challenging any diagnostic procedures, but that's what's come about. Oh, uh, no, I mean big yellow balloon. Big yellow. Would, you, would you like the red one, or do you want to have this pink one that I've already started? Like a planet boom. There's a planet boom, mate. The pupils here have demonstrated that they do have imaginative capacity. These are examples of work done by two of our students that uh, did GCSE art. This is Cheryl's work, and this was part of her self-portrait project looking at things that had occurred in her childhood and looking at the work of Gina Garan that did work with dolls. 
she looked at fear of spiders and then she looked at other things that had been issues for her when she was younger, such as going to the dentist and some of the responses um, that she'd had from visiting the dentist. They are experimental, they're playful, they produce things that are unique and they become very focused and engaged in what they're doing. Have we made a sphere? Uh, a we sphere? Made a door. Yeah, That's That's we made a Darth Vader, Darth oh, Star. Boy. A Dove Star? It's solid. It's solid. It is a bit like, it's like Danny was saying earlier, it's a bit like a planet, a planet isn't it? Yeah. Sphere. Well done. That's it. That's the word that says sphere. Well it done. So it's playing today. Thank you. Up. Very Planet. good. By allowing the students to go in whatever direction they need to go after initially um, stimulating a certain response, it gives them opportunities to make choices and to make decisions. Then whatever they make is uniquely theirs and that increases their, their confidence, their self-esteem and ultimately is empowering. It's something that they can take right through their lives, not just, not just for today or not just for the art session. Zach's probably the most able in our class. He's very, very artistic. He's fantastic. Doing some art. I made this star star was uh, lived in the mean star fader. Thomas tends to work with Zach a lot. Oh, oh, oh. It makes a sphere. Luke's got selective speech, so he, obviously everything we do, we have to. Sign to him. What will Luke do yes. to the balloon? Yes. We, we will pop it, yeah. <laughs> Good talking, um, Luke. Danny's alien, so everything you try and do will be an alien. So it's easier, instead of saying, we're going to build this sphere, we're going to build a, a sphere planet. In our base of a planet, and fame is the same as a planet. And then Danny's like, great, brilliant. Zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. And anyway. When you first start, it's about a little bit difficult until you've sat and observed. Like, you can, you can say the wrong word, and so, like Zach might get upset, or Danny might get upset. So it's, it's really good that we've worked together, because I've been with the, these four since September, so you know what makes them happy, what makes them sad, what they enjoy the most, and it, it, we've got a really good relationship, so it's... I mean, I enjoy it myself, like, they're my little mates, so <laughs> I won't change them for the world. What we're trying to do in this particular lesson is, well, we're working on things like balance, coordination, self in space, but also we're promoting communication, and we're using dance and movement to facilitate that. We've also got particular aims for the children. There's a boy called Cam. He can't sit still, he can't relax. He's going all the time. And his aim was to be able to relax at the end of the session for four minutes. That was his aim. That's taken six months. We have achieved that now. But it's been a long process. We've got Curtis in the group who has a particular relationship with Cam, and this is why we've put him in the group. He was displaying inappropriate behaviour constantly in the classroom. It was becoming a big problem, really disruptive. So we kind of use this session as a way for him to be with Cam, but we don't hug, we don't kiss him, we don't touch him. Richard is a very anxious individual, finds um, anything he does um, very scary, gets very upset easily, um, can be aggressive, um, but likes music. We've done lots of work on locating parts of our body, we're looking at visual images of parts of our body, we're also locating them on other pupils 
So it's classification skills as well. Kaylee has been really thrilled to have one of her pictures chosen to be shown at the Victoria and Albert Museum. That's given her a real sense of self-esteem. So Kaylee is now going to go on to do a diploma course at a college near here um, using those skills that she's learnt uh, through the things that she's been exposed to at Rosehill School, which we're very proud of her. <laughs> look at the trees and think about not just looking straight at the tree but maybe getting down on the ground and looking up at the trees and seeing all the light shining through the leaves. All of the group decided that they liked doing the very close-up macro shots so what I did was I said um, what we need to look at is our school environment, what our school means to us, what things do we see every day that we like you know, it could be something like the um, door handle as you're going into the, the peg where you hang your coat every day. So we talked over a few things that we could take. Uh, then all of the students, including Kaylee, went out with a camera and they took as many shots as they were able to of things that they liked. And I sent them out quite freely on their own. There wasn't any input from the staff. And um, they came back with this these wonderful sets of images that we then thought now how can we display these what would be a nice way and actually Kaylee came up with the idea of doing very small pictures and sticking them on to make a hole and she produced a wonderful wonderful picture and the other students looked at Kaylee's picture and were um, inspired by it if you like and they have all done smaller versions of the same thing so it's their bird's eye view really on what is important to them in, the, in their own environment. I went to mainstream school and I didn't cope very well so I had to come to a special school and you wouldn't have recognised me three years ago I didn't used to talk and I used to like get very angry because I didn't understand what's happening and Rose Hill really helped me to come through. I used to be really, really anxious and the stuff helped me like understand my anxieties and why I used to get anxious. I used to tr trash classrooms and break things and throw things around and run around screaming. <laughs> When Kaylee first came into our group, um, she was a very anxious young lady and small things uh, used to quite upset her and Kaylee sometimes, when she was very, very anxious, used to go back um, into being a little girl and she'd talk to us in a little girl voice and we knew then that she was experiencing sort of great anxieties because she, she was in this little girl mode. Um, but very gradually, um, as her confidence has built, we don't see that that, we, well, we saw it less and less, and now, obviously, Kaylee doesn't need to do that because she copes in other ways now. She knows that she's got people she can go and talk to uh, if she's got any worries, and we've encouraged that along the way, and so we don't see that sort of um, personality from Kaylee now. Although you, I'm sure she does have anxieties, but she is able to um, cope with them much better now. We're all very proud, actually, of what Kaylee has achieved. Just started like coping better and better every single day with the structure of the school and the structure of the lesson times, everything's really structured. So, so I started to cope much better with that. Wrote all things down and what's going to happen in the day and different times and stuff. And then like have the blackboard and had used to have a picture board so you could stick pictures on so I knew what was coming up next and take it around with me. Help me understand what was going to happen. We started doing um, digital photography in 16 plus and really got into doing that. And then we started doing a digital OCN, so that was good fun. And we had regular art lessons and there was opportunities to use the cameras in the art lessons. And so I started using them then. So it was good. And then we got a digital camera at home, so I started using that more and taking lots of pictures. And it just kind of went on from there. Martin Parr inspired me to do quite a lot of work. I saw a video about him at college and I liked how he took photographs of things close up and people being like natural, not really noticing the camera and stuff. I really enjoyed looking at his work. I do a lot more close up work and stuff that like he's done photographs of and that's inspired me to do 
like my photographs. Maggie is one of the TAs and she's into digital photography as well. So we both go out and take pictures and then we go look at them. And she like organises the lesson plans and sorts everything out and what we're going to do in the lesson. And then we just have fun with the horrors. In the photograph, I was looking around to try and find different things, and there was still a tiny fly in the very corner of it, stuck in the web. And I liked how the background was blurry, but the foreground is clear. I like the different colours, some of the all different shapes, and how they kind of like to stand out when I took the photograph. I like this one the best because um, the water looks like ice and it's all sparkly and we're like because the tap some of it's in focus and some, some of it isn't but the thing that did it for me was the water coming out the bottom so it just looks it's like crystal we were doing about our environment in school and i took pictures of all of 16 plus in school and then put them together with a big montage There was a boy called Luke and I helped him take photographs and he really enjoyed doing that. And he got quite a bit of autism. So he just like went around taking lots of photographs of things and he really enjoyed looking back at them. I applied to go to Grantham College and I applied to do a BTEC in art and design. It also covers things like pottery and photography and stuff. And I went for my college interview last week and they said they wanted me to do the art and design diploma instead of doing the BTEC, which is like a level up. So I was really happy about that. They asked me like, about my work and why I did different things in my work. No fracking. <laughs> it was okay. Yeah, there have been bad days and there have been fantastic days, but this job is fantastic and it's, you've got to have the passion in your heart because I'm not going to sit here and say, oh yeah, the kids are great, they come and love you. I mean, we've had chairs thrown, tables thrown, but unless that passion's not in your heart, I don't think you should work with kids in mainstream or in at Rose Hill. The, the, both is the same, you've just got to have the passion to do it. I think all schools would benefit by having artists working within them, even if it's only a short scale situation, because that can stimulate staff, it gives students alternative ways of looking at things and alternative ways of working and often alternative materials to work with and in itself can be a great stimulus to the school and its environment. Art it can be used quite powerfully as an alternative way of communicating. It's another form of expression, you know, it can sometimes help people to kind of express their anger or their happiness or sadness, which they perhaps couldn't do in any other way. Cut!